This right here, my friends, is the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. Retails for about $70, and for the price, it's a really good controller. I still think it's overpriced, but it's a really good controller. It's probably the most comfortable controller I've ever held, and I'm going to go talk about it some more. I've talked about it before, but I want to get into it in a little bit more in depth. So, starting off with the front, what we have here is a beautiful design. It's really comfortable. The way it angles down, these grips do, it's just really comfortable. This feels, this is a really nice texture, and this plastic, it's just so smooth. Anyway, so, analog sticks work fine. Click in. This uh, concave convex design they have going on here, like the, the convex with the little ridges around the edge. Perfect, beautiful, works great. These buttons are big, clicky, and awesome. Uh, home button, this stuff is fine, it all works. Now the D-pad is where I come into a little bit of trouble with this thing, it's it's mushy. Now hold on, just give me just a sec here. I'm going to compare it to a new Nintendo product that came out after this thing did. The Nintendo 2DS XL. This is a smaller D-pad, but look. Clicky, that's how a D-pad is supposed to be. Not mushy and gross like the uh, Pro Controller is. This thing is gross, it's mushy, but thankfully on the Xenoblade 2 version of this controller, the D-pad's a little bit better from what I've heard and seen in videos. Um, but that's really, it has everything you need. It's really comfortable, it just naturally fits in your hand. Uh, I've always been a Sony guy, so I usually expect my analog sticks to be down here, but eh, I actually prefer this now. It's really comfy. So on the top, we have our standard left and right bumpers, R, Z, L, and Z, R. And then, of course, we have right here, this is the little light to indicate when you're charging it. It lights up orange. This is your USB-C, which is nice because it's the same as the Switch. So if you happen to lose your cable for this thing, you can just take the one from the Switch, whatever. And this is the power button for the controller. This also brings me to something else. There's no way to turn off the Switch or turn on the Switch using just the controller. You have to get up, go over to the dock, or over to the system itself and turn it on from there. This isn't a problem in tabletop mode when you have the system sitting right here in front of you and you just boop, hit the button, but it is a problem when you have to go across the room and then hit the button on the switch to be done. It's whatever, it's not that big of a deal. It's literally the smallest gripe I have about this thing. Now let's go to the back. Nice translucent plastic all around this main frame here. This is really pretty by the way, I love it. I love that. It's super nice. This battery in here, awesome. It lasts up to 40 hours on a single charge. That is insane. That's awesome. And you can even kind of see under here, I don't, I don't know if you can in the light, you kind of can right there. You can see where the triggers fit. Now the triggers are digital, not analog, so you can't like push it down a little bit, it just clicks. That's it, that's all it is. So GameCube games like Luigi's Mansion won't have that functionality if they ever decide to release those, which I wish they would. I would love to play Super Mario Sunshine on my big HD TV, even though I know I could, it's just like, I wanna play it on my Switch, whatever. So, on the bottom, we have the lights. I'm turning it upside down now. Uh, on the, we have the lights indicating which player you are. Uh, first, two lights light up. It's second, three lights light up. It's third. And then all four lights is fourth player. You get the point. Now, price, $70, as I said. This is very expensive um, for controllers. It's $10 more than the PS4 controller and the Xbox One controller. Now, is it worth the price? Eh... I mean, it, it's. It, I feel like it should just be sixty dollars. It shouldn't have to be seventy, but I don't really mind because this thing has something that the PS4 controller and the Xbox One controller don't have. This thing is an NFC reader, which this is one of those smaller things. I don't think Sony even cares about this. You can use your amiibo, tap them on here, and use them in the game. Really fun. Also, this thing has a gyroscope. Motion controls are. Fucking amazing on this controller. It's beautiful. It's so comfy to move this thing around. Like when I'm playing Breath of the Wild or Sky, I'm wanting to aim a bow with this controller. It's way better than just having to sit there and move the analog stick. It's so much more comfy, so much more natural. It, it's not as good as a mouse and keyboard, of course, but it's really nice. I think it's a lot better than having to move this to aim. That's my opinion, though. So, overall, great design. It comes in, I think, several designs, actually. Splatoon 2, this one, Mario Odyssey, and then, as I talked about earlier, Xenoblade Chronicles. Great designs. They all look great. You can look them up. They're, I think I think some of them are more expensive than $7. I think most of them are $75, which is kind of eh. But personally, I think this one looks great. Uh, I think the Splatoon 2 one does kind of make me mad with how one of the things is green and the other one's purple. I don't know if that's right, which side I just tapped to, but that does kind of make me mad because I'm like, it's not even. Fix it. But that's not a big deal. The Mario Odyssey one's red. I think these are white. And on the back, I think it's black again, which is weird, but... I like it. I think it's cool. If I could get one, I totally would, but I could never seem to find them around in my area. So, if you had to pick between buying two Joy-Cons and this thing, I would say this thing, because this thing is only $70, two Joy-Cons are 80 Now, if you broke your Joy-Cons, don't know what situation you'd be in when you do that, 
your kid stepped on him, you stepped on him, you accidentally put the, the straps on backwards and then you broke them. Very relatable, trust me. I have never broken mine, but then there are times where I'm like, put it on backwards, I'm like, fuck, 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 I tear it off and then I feel like I just broke it, but I didn't. Um, but you should probably just buy new Joy-Cons in that instance. But if you're not needing new Joy-Cons, this thing is it. There is no other third party thing that comes even close to the quality and performance of this controller. Now, I'd say that the Power 8 controller, uh, the one with the Mario Odyssey design, Breath of the Wild design, comes very close to this. It's it's second, and it's only 30 bucks, but it is wired, and it doesn't have motion controls, nor does it have NFC. So it's up there. It's a pretty decent controller, but not as good as this one. I might give a review of that one sometime as a sort of budget review. So if you guys enjoyed the review on this controller, I think I've talked about just about everything on this thing. So if you guys enjoyed the review, I will make more and uh, give the video a like if you want to. I really don't care, to be honest. Anyway, so I'll see you guys all in the next video. Bye-bye. It's really...